Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Serious Strategy Game and this is Taskmasters, where every Tuesday I go up against other YouTubers to design ships in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Now we are in week f 4 of Season 1 and today is going to be a very interesting task because we are going to go up against a massive fleet. But before we go into that, let's briefly do a recap of the season so far and last week in particular. Now last week we had to design pre-Dreadnought battleships and that was very interesting because, well, we had a very interesting scoring system and one of the points that we could get is we if we were being torpedoed but the ship survived until the end of the fight. So that was very interesting because uh, it's actually very counterintuitive. You actually want your ship to be torpedoed and that's such a rare thing. So how did everyone do that? Now Stealth 17 unfortunately did do the worst so I'm going to start with him. He had a actually very de good design ship. He went with Spain, had four 13 inch guns. I think he had the best ship uh, off the pack. It was a very clean, nice design. He had a good start uh, to his playthrough as well. He kept all of the torpedo boats alive though and in the hopes of being torpedoed and that was a little bit his downfall because he was coming in a little bit too close and that means one of his battleships suffered four torpedo hits and that is just not survivable. So that ship sank. That means he did not get the point for being torpedoed and surviving. And in addition, he lost the point for not keeping all of his ships alive. So unfortunately, even though he had a very good design, he ultimately only scored three points. Brother Monroe, on the other hand, did a very funny design. His design was <laughs> outlandish compared to everyone else. Um, he w went with the US, he only picked nine inch main guns and only two of them, so very lightly armored ship. But that was uh, being taken up by the torpedo. So he was building a, basically a torpedo bus coming in very aggressively at a high speed towards the enemy and trying to send them down with the torpedoes. Now, that worked out fairly well against the enemy battleship, but it does mean he needed to get in uh, to 1, 1 1.5 kilometers, and at that range, the enemy could actually penetrate his armor, and that means he lost a battleship and thereby also a point. So, four points for Brother Monroe there. Spartan Elite. Now, he played as Japan and he had a very, I think, all in all pretty decent design. 12 inch guns, 18 inches of belt armor, but only 16 knots speed. And that, that came to hurt him a little bit because he had a good run. He killed all of the torpedo boats uh, pretty early, pretty neatly. And he planned to get torpedoed by one of the enemy battleships. But due to his slow speed, he just could not catch up to the enemy. The enemy was running away from him, he was outside of torpedo range, and he couldn't get into the range to be torpedoed. So what he did is he started firing at the enemy battleship, hoping to cause some damage to the engine, for example, slow it down so he could catch up and then get torpedoed. Unfortunately though, one of his shells was just a little bit too lucky. It did penetrate the enemy battleship, it caused flash fire or some ammo explosion, and that means his uh, the enemy blew up without him being torpedoed, so he also came in one point short. Now, our run was probably the weirdest of all of the ships. It was a Russian hull and it had a very, very weird balance, uh, which basically means that we couldn't really put that much weight on the rear of the ship and we ended up with a very weird three, gun, three main gun layout. Um, but it was fine in the end. Uh, we did come in very nicely. Uh, we were very nearly torpedoed, but actually the enemy missed by just about a meter. And normally that's so brilliant, but in this time it was uh, pretty bad. On the other hand, ultimately we did get hit by one battleship, uh, one torpedo from one battleship, very clean design there. Um, and that was all fine until we nearly lost one of our battleships in a collision with one of the sinking wrecks. Fortunately, that ship did not go down before we could sink all of the enemies, so that means we got five points last week. And that does bring us to the top of the pack, actually, at this point. So we have, at this point, ten points, uh, where Spartan Elite has eight, Brother Monroe has eight, and Stealth 17 has six points. So, will we be able to keep this going and uh, keep defend our position here? Let's see. So, this week, I prepared this out, actually. We're going to go up a French fleet by playing the Chinese. Distance is 20,000 meters. The year is 1930. Now, the enemy ship uh, fleet consists of a battleship, two heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and four destroyers. Now, that's all very nice, but we can design only one ship. I've uh, highlighted all of them here. 
uh, but in reality we can only pick one of these guys. Now let's talk about the scoring here. We're going to get a point if we can sink the enemy battleship. We're going to get a point if we can sink all of the enemy ships. We're going to get a point if we can finish with 80% structural integrity remaining. So that would be fun. And we could get a point. We could actually get two points if we can sink all enemy ships by using only torpedoes. That sounds lovely, but I think this is the first time we're not actually going to go for that. Because sinking destroyers with only torpedoes, that's really difficult. These guys are nimble. They can spot torpedoes coming in very early. They can um, basically maneuver out of the way. And it would be extremely tough to sink all of these ships building only one ship with torpedoes. So I don't think we're going to do that. And that does mean to me that we pretty much want to pick the heaviest ship that we can, either battleship or battlecruiser. I think we're going to go for the battleship. It's just going to be a slightly more conservative approach here. And yeah, we're going to go up against the enemy here. So let's hit it and let's design it. So we can pick two different hulls here. We can either pick the experimental battleship, 99 hull form. Hull form is not really that important. We're not going to go for speed. We are going to go for stability, I think. But notice just how the modernized Dreadnought has so much more displacement. Yeah, I actually think I like the idea of uh, picking all of that displacement here because we're not going to be uh, penalized by that at all. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pick the best secondary and uh, primary towers here. We're going to pick a funnel. Can we put you on that? No. We're going to pick another funnel then. Um, just so that we've got all of these guys going here. Um, and I do want to take a look at the main guns. So what have we got? 18 inch guns mark 2. That's not great. Uh, 16 inch guns mark 3. We're starting at 20,000 meters. That's pretty much the same accuracy here. Although the 18 inch guns are probably going to do a lot more damage of course. Yeah, okay, we're going to try to go for the 18-inch guns. Don't think we want to go quadruple. The accuracy penalty is probably too bad. Yeah, it's at least 10%, if not more. No, that looks more like 20%. No, no, no. So either three, ba three barrel guns or two barrel guns. It's a very small drop here in accuracy. Rate of fire is, of course, worse. Let's do pick the, the, uh, the two barrels here. And that basically allows us to now get all of these guys here on the right. And we're going to go for pretty much the best stuff that we can in all of these categories, because really, why not? Um, the only exception here that I want to make is I'm not entirely sure on the torpedo protection. The torpedo protection would add a lot of weight, but then, you know, Jesus, look at that. 8,000 tons. No, no, no. We're not going to do that. Uh, we are, however, going to use a lot of shells and we could go for tube powder for the 10.5 shell penetration that would be helpful although i do like the shell damage and i do like the he damage as well uh, because remember we're not only going to get up against the enemy battleship we're also going to go up against some other ships here and i think other than normal i am probably this time going to go for a long range approach here Normally, uh, you can see us coming in very aggressively, but against a fleet of that size, I don't think this is viable at all. So, yeah, let's try to go for long-range um, firepower here. Just out of curiosity, if we were to choose some torpedoes here, uh, what could we pick? Yeah, oxygen is not yet a a available, so yeah, that's, that's a no then. Right, so that's already kind of a design. Let's... Um, do the normal thing here and pretty much get a couple more guns on this ship. I do want to at least have eight guns. Eight guns are like the minimum that, that I think we can or should be playing with here. Can I fit you in here? Come on. Come on. Well, I could probably... I could do it like this, but this is always a little bit dangerous in, and, and tends to screw up the aiming processes and so on. Okay, how about a design like this? We have one super firing gun there. 
You guys are fine like that. So we've got eight barrels in total. Four of them forward facing, and a good ni nice broadside of everyone. We can't. Ha we don't have a super firing arrangement here in the rear, but I think we're going to be all right with that. So let's talk secondary guns. This Mark IV, Mark IV, Mark IV, Mark IV, Mark IV, Mark V. They're under two inches, but yeah, I think two inches are not exactly what we want to do. Um, can I put you here? Is that really illegal? How about if I move you a little bit forward? Okay, yeah, that works. Still not? Okay, apparently not. Can I move you even further to the front? I can. I would like some secondaries here, especially against the light cruisers and, and other enemy ships. So, uh, like that should be okay. Nice and forward facing. Okay, I can actually pull you back a little bit here to the rear. Which is not too bad because that's allowing slightly better firing arcs on the main guns there. Uh, which I think are going to be appreciated. Can I pick you, put you somewhere over here? Come on, come on, just okay, a little bit to the rear here. I do want to use as, as many, ah, oh, there we go. Uh, as many 8-inch guns as po possible. You know what, there seems to be cosmos here, so yeah, yeah, let's actually use them. Sometimes the game does consider some of these placements illegal for some reason, but to me that looks pretty good. Okay, yeah, that's that's a decent amount of uh, primary guns here. How about some, oh yeah, look at that. Put you forward facing there, can I put someone in the middle here? Maybe on the back here. No, doesn't seem like it. That's all right. Maybe like that. No. Maybe a six-inch gun will fit in here. Pretty much no. Maybe if we remove the eight-inch gun. But you know what? I think the eight-inch gun is going to be slightly better. Um, can we? What's your range actually? Your range is six kilometers. That's basically nothing. 3 inch guns, some here in the in the top, in the superstructure, maybe some more here, no, no, really, nowhere, okay, forward facing, that's, that's alright, I do think forward facing guns are generally going to be the most uh, useful against enemy torpedoes because they are going to come in from the front mostly, so that should be alright. Offset is okay, we do have quite a bit of weight here left, which we can use for various things. So we should actually check the engine whether our... Okay, yeah, seems all right. What if we go to used? 92... Uh, 9? 100. Okay, you want, you're not... I think 25 knots are our fine speed still uh, for such a vessel, and that does allow us to use quite a bit, hopefully, here. Uh, on various, uh, I guess we can use 30 inches of armor on the conning tower, or probably at least like 15 over here. Yeah, that's that's still not great. We do need more deck armor if we're going to fight um, at a longer range. So there we go. That does pretty much. That's pretty much it. Forward offset here. We can pull that back a little bit further. Come on, just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's a noisily balanced ship. I like it. Okay, go for some more armor here. I think that's going to be useful once we do close in a little bit. Are we happy with everything? Don't, haven't we overlooked anything? Maximum bulkheads, all of this is good. Engine efficiency is superb. I do like all of this. Let's go for it. Maybe we could have done a little bit more on the secondaries. Maybe we could have put uh, some torpedoes on the boat, uh, but there's no chance whatsoever that we can sink four enemy destroyers just with uh, with torpedoes. And that's nine enemy ships. That's already a tall order just by having one ship approaching them. Maybe it would have been viable with oxygen torpedoes, but they are not available in 1930. So, yeah, that's uh, basically a no-no. Come on, game. Don't crash on me. Oh, seems all right. Good. At least it's building the battleship. I think the battleship is probably going to be the toughest one. 
We have no torpedo protection, so we must be mindful about that too. But I think we can hopefully be. We've got at least the better shafts, the better auxiliary engines and so on. So we should be fine there. Okay, what design is that? Looks a little bit like a Nelson type design with the forward facing arrangement there. Okay, uh, let's check you out. So what have you got? That looks like big guns. That is six 19 inch guns. So they've got bigger guns than we have. They've also got a couple of 8 inch guns. No, a very large number of 18 inch guns. 8 inch guns. Okay. So we should make sure not to get in his in his range for, for the 8 inch guns. I think that would be preferential. That's a range of 16 kilometers. And we are over here. Uh, we're actually driving towards you. Uh, what's your orientation? You're going left. We are actually targeting you. Let's just reaffirm that. And that probably means we want to shift around here to the left. Keep our distance and go a little bit like that um, I guess we can go drop down here in speed a little bit oh there we go uh, first shots fired so they've got six guns in triple turrets triple turrets are gonna fire slower than ours and we've got slower a lower caliber so we can hope to fire many more guns at him we've got more barrels we've got a higher rate of fire on these barrels all of that should be in our favor. The only thing that's not in our favor... Ooh, there's a nice early hit here. I do like to see that, and it is causing some fire here. Wow. These guys are loud. Please don't hit me. Yeah. The big issue here is, if they're going to hit at this distance, our deck armor, and especially our extended deck armor, are not going to be helping. Not at all. Do we know anything about you? No, we don't. Ah, oh, that, that was beautiful shots there. Right, uh, I'm guessing we can go slightly faster here because we do want to get to 21 knots or so to get an accuracy bonus. Wow. He is accurate. He is super accurate at this point. But so are we, 8.6. That's not bad. We've actually scored two hits at this point. Nice. But yeah, one partial penetration, one penetration there. Okay, that's fine. Distance of 17 kilometers. We need to be slightly careful here because we do not want to get in the range here of his 18. Oh, wait a minute. Nice. Did score another hit there. So your range of 18 of 8 inch guns is slightly lower than ours. But I do really not want to get in into that range. 16.5, whereas you've got 16 point, yeah, so we've got slightly more range than he has, um, and I guess we can apply our secondaries here against some of these other targets. Not that I do think they are a high priority, a high priority definitely is the battleship, but yeah, okay, we've got a decent speed here, let's uh, turn our engine slightly down, because we should have a good bonus from that, nice. We are scoring hits. That's that's really lovely to see. Haven't really identified him yet. Do, don't know too much about him, so that's a bit of an issue. And you know what? You can try to use your secondaries there against the... Jesus. That looks dangerous. We are scoring a good number of hits here. Five hits already against his non... Oh, there we go. Okay, we do know we have identified him now as the Souffrant. Mark, maximum ball cats, that's uh, too bad. Pretty good Citadel 5. Heavy shells, increased ammo, electrical turrets. Yeah. He's pretty good. Also pretty good speed. We have already destroyed a little bit of him, so that is nice. And uh, what were these hits, actually? Belt, deck, deck, deck. Okay, I guess I'm, I guess that's fine. Right, um, let's go to three times speed here. I really hope that we can bring him down slightly, but kind of doubt it. Okay, what have you guys got actually? Lots and lots of torpedoes, ten kilometer range. That probably means you've got fast torpedoes. Yeah, we can actually check that, doesn't it? Can't be. You've got fast torpedo propulsion. 
Yeah, thought so. That's a slight issue. Really must make sure that we can't that they can't get close enough. So far we've been extremely lucky not to get hit here. What's your accuracy here? 4.4, whereas we've got 6.3. It's not bad for us. Are you actually using... No, they, these are high explosive shells. I think at least they are. Would be nice to score some hits here on the destroyer, maybe take out one of their uh, torpedo tubes or anything. But yeah, so far not. 8 inch guns on the heavy cruisers, no torpedoes there. Couple of torpedoes here on the light cruisers, what are you actually packing? Large number of double turrets there and triple torpedo tubes on either side. Interesting. Right, you're firing oh, Jesus. We've got him down by 25 percentage points, but is that going to be enough? Um, I do think we need to come slightly more parallel in here. I don't want to be too close, but I do want to be not opening up the distance. At least not too much. He's got a lot of ammo. Yeah, I think he's actually more ammo than, than we've got if you scale that with the damage that he would do. If he does hit. Which so far, luckily, he hasn't. But it's only a matter of time, really. Uh, what are you doing there? Yeah, you're just trailing the other guys. Should be okay. Jesus. This is making me nervous. And this reminds me of one of the um, older naval games. I think it was called Utland. And it was only running in real time and you would be actually placing the uh, the engagement at uh, the Battle of uh, Utland of course or Doja Bank um, and it's absolutely nerve-wracking to play that in real time and you don't actually of course see the shells coming into you you just see the flashes on the horizon and them opening up and then you know at any time there is a risk that that might be the one the one shell that hits you and probably tears you apart so that's that's really nerve-wracking. I mean, in in time acceleration here and with these shells incoming, uh, it slightly takes away the suspense, but then again, not too much. So yeah, there we go. What about that light cruiser there? The Pluton still trailing. The Safran, no hits here since since a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna accelerate further to keep this somewhat entertaining for you guys. Ah, there we go. That's another five damage point, uh, five percentage points distraught on him. I would actually like to really target the Tonart, Tonart, Tonant, because that has a chance of hitting the Discartes as well. But I don't want to overdo it. The battleship is at this point the greatest threat. Another hit here, only partial penetration this time in the mid belt. You've got. 13 inches of belt armor, 7 belt extended, 6.6 .6 deck. You're actually relatively well armored on the deck compared to us. I mean, you we're more or less on par, right? So that's 6.6 .6 against our 7. Ooh, there we go. Another nice hit and flooding. This is going really well for us because this means he is now going to suffer from some accuracy penalties, uh, which do, does come in very useful. Damage instability. It's only three percentage points for now, but or three percent, I guess. I guess these guys are all multiplying with each other. But every little bit helps, and he's slowing down, which makes him easier to hit for us. Twenty-four knots. Yeah, that's four knots below his best speed. If we can bring him down even further, that'd be brilliant because right now he's close to his own cruise speed, as are we, of course. But if we could bring that down. That would be most appreciated, actually. Right, let's wait for our next salvo here, and then we're going to turn in a little bit. Nice hits here. I did not expect these hits to be so loopsided. I really don't want to jinx it, though. Need to keep an eye on that destroyer there, uh, on that light cruiser. Whew. Yeah, we do have a much better chance to hit than he does. 
guessing you have coincidental rangefinders, don't you? Yeah, you do. Whereas we've got the stereoscopic ones, so we have got the advantage here at a range. So let's do keep that somewhat open. He's got the better base accuracy, but at these distances... Have you actually got radar? You've only got Generation 1 radar. That's really lucky. I mean, everything else about that design is pretty good. Except for the fact that he doesn't have the long-range accuracy. And that, I think, makes it very good that we did decide to keep the range somewhat open again. He's down to 50% and we haven't suffered a single hit here. Damage instability, it's actually relatively low, which is interesting. What does it look for us? I'm really just expecting one of these one of these shells at one point is gonna land on us. And it's gonna wreck us. I just know it. Light cruiser? Yeah, you're still not a range. Really not sure why why you're doing that while you're training so far. So far, come on. Here's another salvo incoming. No hits there. No hits by him either though. And that is that is the important bit. Well, we've got 800 shells left at 5%. That would score 5 uh, 40 hits or so. Should be enough, shouldn't it? Yeah, we brought him down by 15 hits, so that would mean that we are relatively low, but there's, there's hit number 16, he's down to 50% exactly. Oh, he was actually brought down there by, by one percentage point by, I think, the fire, probably. Uh, what's actually your armor on the turret? 15.8. That should be good enough to not enable us to score a hit there. Hey, what's your top armor there? To the top seven inches. And he's got these nice tight salvos. I really expect that he was bracketing us there. I really expect that at one point he's gonna score a double hit or something. Ah, oh, speaking of, there's a double hit fast and it's flooding! And it's 38% structural integrity left for him. That is really nice. That will bring him down in speed and that will reduce his accuracy. Not so much by the damage instability, although that is up to 6% too. But due to the own crew speed, he's gonna suffer more from that. Whew. Guys, this is making me so nervous. I think a single hit from him would probably bring us below 80%. Steering damage, that is lovely. He must be losing speed now. Module damage to the rudder. He's still taking on water. Top speed, 28 inches, uh, 28.5 knots. Does he still have the 20% accuracy bonus there from own crew speed? Yeah, he does. That must come down. Well, at some point he's gonna suffer engine damage too. Still got 700 shells left. He's not gonna he's not gonna take on too much water, I, I know for sure. Because with maximum bulkheads, the AI has gotten so much better in designing these. But I'm still incredibly nervous here. That's good. Yeah, that's that's really full. But even once we have killed him, we still need to take into account all of these ships here. And we've got pretty bad torpedo protection, not the nice hit here. 32%. That's good. That is good. He's still pretty pretty consistently driving at 91 knots though. Now one thing that we could consider, okay let's uh, take a second here, one thing that we could consider is all of his power is facing forward. He's got us a damage steering we could try to cut in behind him, although that would bring us dangerously close to the Pluton. I think we are doing relatively fine as we are, but that might be one of the strategies that we could employ. Is do a half right turn here, come in, come in behind him. But with all of these torpedoes ca torpedo carriers here, I'm, I'm very concerned. 
But it would potentially allow us to negate his his firing power. Uh, we've lost sight of the light cruiser, which was over there. 700 shells left. Let's take a look at this from his perspective. Nice. Down to 29%. How are these shells going to land? Far. Really far. Yeah. I mean, he's got a very good design. I, I don't want to diminish his design. The AI has gotten so much better at that. But the fact that he doesn't have long-range accuracy... I mean, realistically, what it should mean is that he should try to close the distance. Not sure you can do that anymore with this 20 knots. Line hit there. That was probably against the belt. Yeah. You can see the deck. The deck hits are fine. But they also don't really cause enough, uh, enough flooding or anything to really bring him down. 650 shells left on our side. I do feel vindicated in the uh, dual turrets, by the way. They do f work fairly nicely. We've got the better rate of fire. We could have gone, of course, for triple turrets. But I don't know. I like it. Triple turrets would have been slightly less accurate. And I think, you know, maybe if we hadn't scored early hits as much as we did, you're still capable of scoring damage here, aren't you? You know what, I do think we need to come slightly in. Let's come like that direction. Because we are not scoring as many hits as we used to. He is losing speed though. And I think at very long ranges, his uh, guns... Ooh, that's a nice hit. And I think, yeah, one belt, one deck. And the deck hits really, really tear him apart. How much damage and stability have you got? 5.4. You're still doing very well in terms of your own speed there, though. Four point one for us to hit him. It's a very nice duel. I like it. It's a good. It's a good challenge. And we haven't. We haven't scored a point yet. It's one point for sinking the battleship, one point for sinking all ships, and potentially one point for remaining above eighty percent structure and integrity if we can keep that up, which by no means is is sure. I still think that a single hit from him could really do it for us. I mean, our hits routinely do like five percent damage, and he has he has got the better caliber. Oh, that's nice. Damage to the main tower. That also should reduce his accuracy slightly. It's only minor damage though, so probably not going to make that much of a difference. Does he use high explosive shells? I think he does. Should we be doing that? No, I don't think so. Would that score? Would that cause a penetrating hit? I don't think so. I don't think so. It might. Okay, we are closing in slot somewhat. Yeah, he's got 2% accuracy. We've got 4. Still, I mean, that's only twice as much. And we've scored 30 hits, whereas he has still scored 0. Which is very lovely. Of course, we got to keep in mind that we've got more guns and guns that are firing a lot more often. Does he even have the auto-firing? No, standard reloading... Yeah, our our guns are much much. So we've got a rate of fire here of 1.16, and he's got yeah a third of that. So yeah, by all means, we should be scoring many many more hits than he is. Well, if I do need to come in, and we probably need to think about that at least four hundred shells or so. I want to come in behind him, because without the rudder, he's got very poor ability to turn around. And I do think we could be able to wreck him. I'm very concerned about all of these top carriers, though. 
I'm still concerned about his guns too. Come on. Need a couple more hits here. Could of course try to send some shells your way. But then again, you know the heavy cruiser here really isn't the worst. Ooh, nice hit there. It's down to 17% and he's flooding and still burning. How fast are you traveling? You're down to 20 knots, not even. You've still got a good, good firing, so, uh, I mean, relatively good firing solution. Yeah, he's up to 4% now. We were actually at, at twice his amount. We're now slightly lower. Although the relative distance in like uh, percentage points seems to be the same. I'm concerned about our ammo usage though. 480 shells. That's 24 more hits. It should be enough to bring him down, but look at it. It's most of his stuff is already destroyed, and I think you're doing a lot more less damage against areas that have been hit already. 19.6. Yeah, we are coming in fast here though. Which is not the worst. I would like to at least score some hits here against some of these destroyers. They are very dangerous. Even if we can sink the battleship. I probably, you know, thinking about it, I probably should have um, set a lot more guns, a lot of the secondary guns to the rear here because we're probably going to try to draw away from them. Because what I expect to happen is once we've sunk the battleship, if we can put that off, what is probably going to happen is that these guys are going to then charge in towards us. Ah, there we go. That's his first hit. 19 inches. He's hitting a secondary gun, which did cause his uh, things to explode. But it did take out one of our uh, secondary guns here. You can see that turret there is out of action. So we should keep in mind that our port side is uh, in slightly worse condition when it comes to fending off enemy ships. An okay hit there, but he's up to 16%. That's not that bad, really. We really haven't seen that light cruiser here in a while, although he seems to be pretty much where he was. Not sure why he's so far behind. We should be able to keep up, keep up. How fast can you guys go? 31 knots, 34 knots. That's that's fast. Oh, we've scored, we've uh, suffered a second hit here. One of them was blocked. We had, we're up to 7.6, but he's up to 6. We were doing much better at a larger distance, but with that ammo usage... Nice. Oh, that's a good hit. That's, that's... That's another... He's down to 11%. Okay, secondaries can start shooting at him. We've got a lot of secondary gun ammo, so should be okay. Another nice hit there. He's down to 9% and flooding. He's losing speed fast now. But he still has a decent chance to hit. Okay, good hit there. Let's uh, come to a perpendicular course. Oh, nice hits here on the destroyer. I didn't expect that. But again, the battleship still is the main danger here. Even even now, he has a good chance to hit. There's another good hit for us, though. And one that leads him to taking on some water. But that compartment is not destroyed, so he will be able to stop that and pump that water out. So, it's not going to be a long-term thing. Okay, yeah. Not scoring hits here against you. Haven't really destroyed anything on your deck though, so that's unfortunate. We are down to, to our last 350 shots. But we're up to 10% hit chance. So I must believe that we can bring him down very quickly now. We've lost 3%. That's, that's not bad, but... He's also got a pretty decent hit chance at this point. 
Okay, more damage here against the destroyer, which is all nice and stuff, but really the battleship is the main thing. Nine point three percent. Come on, come on, guys. There's another salvo. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh, and that flooding hit. Look at that. He's now flooding across the entire bow here, and that probably it's probably not going to lead to his downfall, but. It is going to be tough on him. Still lots of fire against the destroyer, which is lovely. But yeah, he's he was able to stop that flooding and even pump out a lot of the water. 320 shells. 320 shells. Come on. Bring him down. That's a good hit. That's a very good hit. More water. And at five points, he's yeah, he's his engine is pretty much damaged. He's not doing too well. It's pretty much dead in the water at this point. And this is the point where we really would have expected uh, that if we had brought in some torpedoes, that would come in so useful at this point. Also, lots of good damage. He's down to 2%, come on. 2%, and we've got enough guns. Uh, we've, we've got enough shells, I think, to... Just need to hit... Yeah, there we go. 0 0.1, come on, come on, come on. He's still burning, yes! Okay. Whew. Whew. I'm, I'm shaking a little bit, okay. So that's good. Um, let's switch to high explosives now, because I think any remaining target here... It's going to be fine with that. We're going to use the heavy shells on the heavy cruiser here. And I guess we can continue to fire on this destroyer here. Although you can see that these guys are already sort of shifting course and stuff. So... Let's see about that there. Yeah, okay, they are coming in now. Probably I want to use my heavy shells slightly differently in a moment. I'm going to bring up our speed uh, because I want to keep them at a distance basically for as long as possible. I'm not sure why these destroyers here are withdrawing but I'm going to shift my fire then on the light cruiser here uh, because what's your range actually? 12 kilometers. So you're not fast are you? You've got electrical torpedoes. Interesting. The good thing about electrical torpedoes is they're fairly slow. Uh, the downside is you can see them pretty late only. Okay, some hits being scored there. That's that's nice. Yeah. Good broadsides here. Doing a lot of good stuff here. I'm going to shift all of my fire here on the light cruiser because I think it is... Uh, much more dangerous. How many 8 inch air shells have you? Know, 12 guns, 12 18 inch guns. Okay, main tower of damage there. I'm going to keep an eye here on the discard because she is in torpedo range. I really want to make sure that she's not going to be able to take that out. Okay, there we go. Good hit on the heavy cruiser. She's falling back a little bit, it seems. But yeah, we need to make sure that we notice when he's firing off these torpedoes. Now, the good thing is they are slow, so once he does that, I think we're going to be alright. He's emitting smoke, so let's uh, shift far to the destroyer there. Might be slightly easier to hit. Yeah, we did score some hits. I would really like to score some hits against you. Uh, we can probably go into aggressive here. Okay, you are taking on water fast, so that is going to be alright. Shift fire on that guy. Okay, he's too close. He really is starting to become too close. Nice. 
nicer there on the second heavy cruiser. We can open with our three inch guns soon. We don't have that many shells here. And I almost want to use them. Really nervous about torpedoes at this point. Come on. Come on, just hit the heavy cruiser because I think we need the heavy shells against the heavy cruiser. Okay, stop it. The destroyer here has send off some torp so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to turn away from them as hard as we can which given this monster of a ship here is not fast at all I'm afraid so that's a bit of an issue but let's see Ooh, that might just barely not a hit it's 11% you should be okay, there are the torps stop that's a lot of torps We are not going to be able to turn away from them. How fast are your torpedoes? Let's uh, look at that systematically because I really want to make sure. 62 knots. So that's about uh, slightly more than two times our speed. Our distance towards these guys is five kilometers. 5.2. And our intercept point here of the last one. No, they're going to hit us very nice and square, I think. We just might be able to come in front of them. 5.5. That's the distance towards the torpedo. And we need to travel about... Let's call that 1.8. So, 5.5 divided by 1.8 is exactly three we should be able to make it my friends we should be able to make it okay let's the alternative here would be to throw in the reserve uh, reverse the issue the big issue is that would very likely cause the Descartes to launch her torpedoes and we would be eating them these torpedoes then No, 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 I made a horrible mistake. These guys are gonna hit. They are. I just know it, they are. Well, well, well. That was not the greatest run there. We did score one point for sinking the enemy ship, the enemy battleship, but not no more than that. So that is a bit of an issue, but um, yeah, there we go, I guess. Do remember to watch everyone else's videos uh, and let's see how we are comparing to them. Hope you enjoyed. Do leave a like. See you next time. Bye bye guys.